Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about Guts and Black Powder. This is a game that surprisingly has been recommended to me a lot recently, despite the player counts not really being exceedingly high. So I'm not entirely sure why it's been recommended so many times, but it has, so I decided to take a look. And well, is it a good game? It's alright I suppose, it could use a lot of work, and in fairness, the description of the game does say it's unfinished and I think a lot of that shows. The interesting and frankly strange part about Guts and Black Powder is that the gameplay and general systems in place here really do not scream to me zombie survival game or even sort of left for dead zombie objective based game. They scream to me historical simulator type of game. And no, we're not talking about Roblox simulators. Those are not simulators. We're talking about actual real simulator games. And there are a lot of games like that out there. Games that try to sort of simulate and immerse you into these old world battles. There are also games that exist like that on Roblox. And and a lot of this game screams to me that it should be a massive PvP sort of Napoleonic war simulator, but it isn't. And I'm kind of glad it isn't because I don't really have any interest in those games, so if people had suggested this to me, I probably would have just skipped it. But granted, I think those things stand. And my original hypothesis was, well, maybe these guys made a game like that, and then they decided to make a spin-off game that was this. But upon looking into the development studio, I couldn't find any evidence of another game. So my current hypothesis is that maybe they started work on a game like that, and then decided halfway through that they didn't want to make that game and wanted to make a different one. I have no idea, and frankly, I don't know if I ever will know. If any of the developers of this game happen to see this video, feel free to let me know in the comment section. But there are boatloads of systems here that just feel like they don't have any reason to exist. Hands down, the most notable in that front comes from the melee combat. It has melee combat reminiscent of chivalry or for honor, where depending on where you point your camera before you strike is the way that your character swings their sword. In a zombie game, this means absolutely nothing because you're just spamming swinging your sword over and over again. And not only that, but as far as I could tell, there is no way to block, which a zombie game doesn't need, but a PVP game would. And so if you had directional blocking and directional attacking, that would make perfect sense for a PVP sword system but they don't have that here. So why is this even here? And again, I think it's a remnant of what probably was a completely different game. That being said, surprisingly, I think the premise here works rather well. And the big problem with this game is more some of the underlying systems and replayability and less the overall premise itself. Zombie games are a dime a dozen, but Napoleonic War zombie games, not so much. And the class system in Guts and Black Powder plays a pretty vital role in whether or not you succeed or fail when you're playing through a mission. The class system has loads of positives. Every single class is unique in its own way, whether you're playing a medic who has the ability to heal but lacks a firearm, an officer that has a pistol as well as the ability to buff their teammates and make them attack and move faster, or a specialist that fortifies things and is able to put up barriers that'll block out zombies. You can even play as a musician and be able to buff teammates without actually attacking yourself, which is awesome. Unfortunately, the class system has some flaws to it, and I think a lot of these flaws, once again, stem from what probably was initially the pitch for this game. And that's that some classes feel borderline useless, and having them on your team is just a flat-out liability compared to having other classes. For example, the default Rifleman class is awful. It just sucks. There is zero reason to use this class. If you're using it, you're throwing the game for your whole team. That's just the way it is. It has a rifle and a sword and no special buffs. Okay, well what does that do for your team? Absolutely nothing, because the rifle isn't any better than the officer's pistol, so if you wanna have a gun and a sword and actually help your team, then you'd just pick the officer, not the rifleman. Same goes for the shotgun class with the blunderbuss. The blunderbuss really isn't that good at dealing with crowds of enemies like it says it is. So why the hell would you use this class if you can just use a class that actually actively helps the team? 
things like that just sort of make me scratch my head, but then they don't make me scratch my head because, once again, if you think about it, if we're looking at a game where range actually mattered, then having a gun like a rifle that has longer range, that'd be pretty good in a PvP scenario. Here, well, it's useless. There was another problem I ran into with the class systems very often, which was the fact that it's way overly complicated for what it is. I get that the people behind this are probably historical buffs, but when it comes to actual gameplay, splitting the classes into a whole bunch of different factions, having some of them locked behind game passes, having some of them locked behind trophies or badges or whatever, I can't even tell, and then having some of them completely able to be accessed by everybody is really confusing, especially when at the start of the match, if you're a new player, you're just clicking through a bunch of menus and nearly every single class is the same? Okay, so then why do I even have a choice of picking a whole bunch of different factions if 80% of them are exactly the same? It was even more frustrating when I had moments where I think that maybe certain factions weren't available on certain maps, so I would lock in playing as a surgeon, which in of itself was hard enough to find because it was only on like one faction specialist tier and that's the only one I could find. So I'd lock that in and then I would spawn in as a rifleman and be useless. What the fuck? Why? I also think it leads to a large imbalance in the classes that people pick, because I just mentioned the Surgeon earlier, which is incredibly difficult to find when playing basically all of the missions that I played for this sort of introspective on the game. Of the rounds I played, I was one of maybe two medics that I ever saw. And in a lot of these missions, medics are invaluable in keeping your team alive. So if you don't have them, that's a real problem. Every bit of damage that people take is permanent, so they can't get their health back. And the medic class is effectively hidden, making it so if there aren't a whole load of experienced players ready to go and knowing that the medic class is there or telling people where to find the medic class, there are very good odds that your matches will just have zero medics, no way to heal yourself, and in a lot of cases, make the battles feel completely hopeless towards the end where everyone has no health. It's all just so confusing because it could have been very easily solved by not having a hundred factions with the same classes. I just don't get it. Now, in terms of gameplay variety, I think the missions themselves that I played were quite well done, but I will say that the endless mode, which thankfully I only ever had to play once, is just sort of uninspired and unfun, which I can't blame the developers for giving more options, but I can't see why anyone would ever choose to play this. I can't lie here, it gave me a very bad first impression because this was the first thing that I experienced when logging onto the game, and all I could think to myself was, well, hang on, is this it? You spawn into a map, there's waves just like Call of Duty Zombies. As the waves go on, the zombies, there are more of them, they get harder, and um, eventually you lose. All that with not very much fun mechanics that don't lend themselves well to a wave survival game, and, well, it just sort of sucks. It falls apart very quickly, isn't very much fun, and the objective modes are just way, way better. Set objective modes require your team to stick together, have a good class spread, and work together as a team. Which, well, that's great. It's very rare to play a Roblox game that encourages you to work together so heavily like it does in this game. Now, the last thing that I wanted to touch on when it came to Guts and Black Powder was the progression and the sort of longevity of the game. And this, at the current moment of making this video, is a pretty large negative. I get that the game is done, but the amount of unlocks and things that you can buy in the game seems severely lacking, and I'm also sure that there's a pretty good chance that a lot of that stems from the time period, because you can't exactly have a huge list of guns to use or buy, because they didn't exist, and if you just let people buy like M4A1s or some shit, that wouldn't exactly be fun if you just showed up and bought a game pass and gunned down all the zombies, removing any sort of teamwork or working together whatsoever. But that being said, I feel like there needed to be, well, something here, because it feels very, very empty. The amount of things you can buy is extremely limited, and the things that you can buy are so expensive that it's very clear that it would take hours upon hours upon hours to actually unlock most of them. Which, 
I just can't see myself or a whole lot of other people doing. Now granted, it doesn't seem like you need any of these things in order to be effective or succeed, which is a very good thing, but it's a shame that there aren't other little buffs or things that you can get via the shop that actually help you out and you can get within a reasonable amount of time. Overall, Guts and Black Powder is a fun little distraction. It's a game that if you haven't played, I would recommend giving a shot because if anything, it's a few hours of extra fun and it's free to play, so you don't really have any reason not to. That being said, I'm wrapping up here. So if you found this informative or you enjoyed the video, you can leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't, don't. And with all that being said, have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you guys next time.